so excited to chat with you about Departing Seniors. Congratulations on yeah, making a cool me. slasher, a teen slasher. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. So I'm curious, just first off, how did you get involved with the project? How did you kind of come on as the director? Yeah, so my friend Jose Niteras is the writer, and we've been friends for years. We were in the same general circles together Chicago in the Chicago theater community. Uh, yeah, big Chicago fan here. Yeah, I was there for eight years. Um, and so he was saying he had this film and he was trying to produce it. And I've directed a handful of um, short films that are that were on low low budgets that did pretty well in festivals and kind of I was able to yeah. stretch a dollar and really be scrappy about it. And that I think is the mindset that really behooves filmmakers when it comes to indie film uh and so he took me out for lunch we chatted and then after a while he was like actually do you want to direct your first feature and I was like I absolutely would uh and so we kind of paired up to, to, together and uh and f found the right team and made it happen so it was very much a like a kismet uh thing where we just had the meeting and all of a sudden he was like wait do you do you want to direct this and I was like absolutely so yeah well and horror is such a fun genre to play in with low budgets, even though it's difficult and I, we always wish we had more. Like it is like horror is, I feel like so well made in a way for the low budget, scrappy guerrilla filmmaker. I think that's very true. Yeah, I think you can be more flexible. And I think that it's a genre that welcomes innovation and and yeah. creati creativity and uh, new perspectives. And that's kind of what often happens in the indie scene because of either necessity or just because you want to explore something new so are you a horror fan are you a slasher fan is this something like a genre you gravitate towards so yeah I have always loved scream uh I've always been into like that general hell yeah kind of cool sector and then I really like um I, I was saying my, my favorite horror film is let the right one in um like I really I've always loved that film and the way it's so human and it's such a like uh grounded story of just like character and like personality yeah. and relationships within this horrifying world so I've had these little sectors of the genre that I've enjoyed but I'm not someone who's like I see every single horror film you know I see every yeah, single yeah. slasher that's Jose and so when it was time to kind of collaborate on this I was like you got to write me out a big list of like every single oh, film that you thought of okay. every reference etc and he was like great and then I just like dove in and I I had like I had uh horror homework is what I like to call it I just watched so many and it was so much fun because you know there were a lot of instincts I had about what I wanted to do with the film when reading the script and a lot of the horror homework I did almost reaffirmed a lot of like the instincts I naturally had which which makes sense right like we all yeah. um, the things that make us kind of makes the hair stand up on the back of our neck you know all that kind of stuff it, it's suspense it's it's just knowing how to captivate an, uh, an audience and uh, keep them engaged and so it was really fun to kind of go back and see where all these kind of tropes came from uh and yeah I had I had a blast did you have a favorite in your homework that you found? Hmm. I mean, okay. I really love Jennifer's body, especially because like the soundtrack was so inspirational for our soundtrack. Uh, we really wanted to like just rock and roll, you know, and have a, a fun time with that. Um, Final Destination is a classic. It was really fun. Um, I, I also loved, um, uh cabin in the woods i mean like there's i yeah. don't have a favorite. Cool. there's a lot of my love yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and so i know that you know jose wrote the script but in your direction i was curious about like pulling these performances out of these actors because what i love about this movie is that it feels authentic like these aren't just actors playing tropey teenagers like these right. are kids playing kids and it's so easy, as you've probably seen in Slashers, to just make really tropey, like, not interesting lead characters. And what I love yeah. about this movie is how these characters feel so real. And I know partially that's on the page, but as you as a director pulling those performances out of these actors, what was that like to really yeah. create this, like, chemistry and this, like, very distinct vibe in the film between the characters? Yeah. So, yeah, H Jose's uh, scripts, like, uh, he wrote the characters to be very quippy fast talking sarcastic like 
think Gilmore Girls or Mean Girls and it's like in that back and forth dialogue. Um, and so we knew going into auditions that it was written in an almost a stylistic way. And like, that's not how yeah. people necessarily talk, right? But we want it to be yeah. delivered in a way that feels really natural and believable and authentic. So we knew it was a tough kind of ask. So yeah. the answer to your question is just being really specific with casting. I, uh, we, I had someone in mind for a while for, uh, Bianca, and that is who is playing the role. She's fantastic. Her oh name my is- God, she's so good. I mean, I wait. yeah. <laughs> so she's a Chicagoan. I've known Irie for, for years now. We've worked together as actors and uh, been in the same general circle. And so I thought like, I think Irian's going to be the perfect fit for this, but we'll see in auditions. And then she came in and she did an incredible job. And it was actually really, really fine, really, really hard to find the right Javi. Um, that took us a long time uh, just because people would either have the dramatic chops not the comedic chops or they'd have the comedic chops, but they didn't have any real like gravitas and heart. Uh, and they just didn't feel like they could carry a feature film to be totally upfront. Like, like a lot of people were great in one of the other sectors or, or they were yeah. great or both, but they just weren't the right. It didn't feel like Javier. Yeah. It just didn't feel right. Or it was just like, Oh, they're good, but they need a little more work and they can't carry the, a, f- a future film which I think yeah. is, is hard to ask any 18 19 20 21 year old to, to do that's you're yeah. pretty young at that point oh yeah so when we found Ignacio I was like oh praise uh because he just he comes in with a like a, a really interesting humor and all, always has its it's like laced with darkness always it was this perfect foil to Bianca the two of them feel like just yin and yang in a really great way uh and it was nerve-wracking because we didn't have time for them to have like a chemistry read to, to, together oh, we cast okay we cast bianca before we we found ignacio ignacio was actually our last person we cast because it was so hard to find the lead it was so hard and i guess i'll just say i knew i knew what i was looking for and i knew i'd know when i knew and i did and uh and then uh, the first day of filming with them was pretty electric. Uh, I think I I can say I guided them for sure. And I was like, let's tone this down or let's bring this up or react quicker to that. But it's all just kind of molding around the basic building blocks that they brought me. So casting is so important in that way. Yeah, that's so cool. Well, <laughs> and then I, I mean, this movie is also hitting on a lot of aspects of identity and like being like, being yourself regardless and trying to like embrace yourself when others won't. And I spoke to Yanni um, yesterday about his character Um, and also about like conversations that y'all had on set about identity and like all of these. And so I was just curious about what that vibe was like on set because you are talking like, even though it is a comedy, you're still mm -hmm. tackling some really big topics, especially for young people Mm -hmm. now that are um, like still relevant today. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, (laughs) There were definitely sensitive moments on set and you could actually feel certain times on set um, some of our cast members youth and that some of them are still growing up, right? Yeah. So that was interesting to kind of tackle. Um, I had to give direct direction to certain people differently than others, right? They, they're yeah. uh, certain folks needed a certain amount of support or softness for me that others did not um and uh it was interesting you know Yanni and I um came into the the project kind of really seeing eye to eye we had a zoom call before he decided to come on board where he talked about kind of his childhood and being bullied and I did the same for mine we had like kind of a connection on that and talked about our backgrounds and our our identities and uh and for us being the older people kind of on set it was interesting then to interact with some younger folks who really clearly knew themselves really well and others who were still in the process so you know there was going to be ups and downs I think uh as there are to any set um but overall everyone was really respectful and everyone kind of was aware of the story that we we were telling like the bullying and any kind of hardships are happening on screen and off screen it was definitely a place of like openness I look back at the videos from it and it, it feels like camp we, we all were in camp together and we all bonded and got quite close it was very sweet 
That's amazing. And you know what? Whenever you bond, there's always going to be those emotional moments when everyone is just very tired and very overwhelmed. (laughs) Always, especially when you're doing long days and low budgets. There's all like, you know, there's always going to be those times, but it it honestly made our set closer. And also we were filming during COVID. So we had so many things to deal with. You know, we all had to wear masks on set. And so it was definitely, um, it was uh, a bonding experience in so many ways and I'm really excited for the world to finally see this film it feels like it's been like ours in our little family for a while now what, what I like going through the ringer for your first feature I mean obviously you'd had directing experience right. before but it was like all right go for it in a pandemic with no money and see what happens yeah with exactly <laughs> yeah yeah it was like you have a low budget, you've got 16 days to shoot, you have an ensemble, you got stunts, you got locations, you got COVID, like all the things all at once. You only had 16 days to shoot in all of those places. Wow. We shot that we had 16 days. 16 days? It was a, it was a so sprint. Impressive. It was a sprint, yeah. And you're <laughs> so impressive, but also like, please give people more money to make horror movies, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was great though. It was honestly, it, it was great. And I think, you know, Chicago was the perfect place for for it um and at least for me I actually kind of like limitations it 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 it, it, it's a good point makes me be even more inventive and scrappy it's like yeah cool well Claire thank you so much for chatting with me about supporting seniors I'm so excited for everyone to see this this slasher film it's it's an exciting take so I'm so excited thank you so much for the poster of Chicago behind your head it is I have that exact same poster (laughs) Yes, I lived, Chica- I lived in Chicago for a couple of years, and that's one of my yeah, favorite Yeah, I lived there for world, eight years. So. I love Chicago. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> well, it was so lovely to meet you. Thank you so lovely much. Lovely to meet you, too. Bye, Mary Beth. Bye. Thank you.